Ladies and gentlemen, I would now request our special guest, the Vice Chancellor of Asian University for Women, Dr. Rubana Hawk, to say a few words in honor of the night. Dr. Rubana Hawk, as already mentioned, wears many hats, a businesswoman, a poet, an academician, and she's the first female president for BGME elected, and was someone who was featured in BBC 100 Power Women for consecutively two years. Her contribution to the development of Bangladesh is amazing. So please, can we have Dr. Rubana House? I think you're the only foreigner here. So what I said is, you know, when, when introductions are adjective laden, it only creates kind of embarrassment. But uh, JCI, um, Thank you for having us here, um, Honorable Speaker, um, Our Excellency, the Turkish Ambassador to Bangladesh, President JCI, and of course, the rest of the JCI team who are here and beyond. Um, it is a pleasure and a privilege to be here uh, because you are celebrating women. And celebration of women, of course, doesn't quite happen every day. It's just not about uh, the struggle. It's also greatly about the bias. Very often women are looked upon as pretty objects and unfortunately also commercialized in many ventures. It is utterly sad not to see enough women in STEM. It is utterly sad not to see women everywhere in Bangladesh. Yes, we, we claim to have 65% of women working in the ready-made garment sector, but I must admit that they, they do not make it to the top. It's about them being just supervisors. It's not about them leading the industry. It's not about them owning the industry. So I am just going to share a just a personal story. Way back in 2015, um, I chose 10 women to go to the University of Asian Women, uh, Asian University for Women. And you know what happened? They've all graduated. Now the university has 70 ready-made garment workers, female garment workers who have graduated. Out of them, 37 are leading. 11 of them are now becoming entrepreneurs. That's my latest project. So starting from ready-made garment workers, behind the machines, now they're on to becoming entrepreneurs. So the journey of a woman, thank you, the journey of a woman is always marked by adversities. And you know, I was looking at an ad and it said, every space has a story. Every woman has a story. I mean, I'm not saying that men don't have stories, but the stories of women should be marked. Each of us have gone through struggles in life, all of us. And not only that, um, I think it's important to realize that we sort of bring people to the world. So we are in Bangla, what we call is dhoritri, amra dhore thaki. And, and I think we do not get the, the proper credit due. I led BGMEA in times of COVID and in a board of directors of 35, I was the only woman. That's sad. But uh, it's also important to learn lessons. So to all the awardees tonight who have led their own fields with dignity and honor and have actually battled against a lot of prejudices, all I can say is kudos to you. And you know what? I was actually going through the awardees list and I could see Sports, IT, uh, ceramic industry, online marketplaces, uh, mental wellness, uh, fitness and spa, security, social media, acting. Wow, what a huge list. I think JCI was extremely inclusive and, and I've included everyone. Show me, by the way, congratulations for becoming the president of ECAP. Truly, truly. I, you know, there, and you must forgive me for not mentioning everybody's name, but I saw Shiropa is also in the awardees list. Shiropa is in Singapore. 
does fantastic work with mental well-being. She worked with garment workers during COVID and did a great job just counseling all our workers. I'm sure all of you, the rest of you lead, I can see Badhon, who is, uh, you know, I have a very strange story with Badhon. So when Anis, my husband, was running for the mayor of Dhaka, Badhon literally went with me from factory to factory, uh, literally campaigning for my husband and talking to every worker. I will never forget, uh, <laughs> forget what you did for us, my eternal gratitude. Um, I just wanted to clearly also mention that, you know, during the pandemic, many women have lost jobs. Um, many SMEs didn't get access to capital. It's time for us to also realize that while Bangladesh Bank makes it a, literally a prerequisite for every commercial bank and uh, nationalized banks to disburse at least 10% of the credit for women, barely 3% gets disbursed. It's so sad. So I urge you, those women who are in IT, to at least make a national credit platform so that when a woman actually seeks capital, uh, it's visible to every, every bank. Otherwise, somebody in Upozilla, somebody in a gram, how do you expect them to come this far? So it's important that you know, we women also stand for each other. So very often, you know, the UN women says it's hashtag he for she. And I keep on saying it's not hashtag he for she. It's hashtag she for she. A woman needs to stand beside a woman. We are the ones who don't stand beside ourselves. I can see Himika in white. And, you know, I know that, you know, she's had to struggle too. I mean, just because you are a woman who's talented, you just don't make it there. It's also networking that counts. So let the network of women get stronger by the day. Let us all mentor our, our other, other aspiring leaders who can be out there. Let's all stand beside one another. Let JCI be a platform for that. I mean, I was looking at the JCI governing board, I think, and President, you have to forgive me for this. But I think I only saw six female faces. Eight? Yeah, but do you have a VP who's a female? No. So I urge you. Okay. So I urge you to have more women in decision making places. I'm sure it's a difficult journey, but I'm sure you'll find a lot of volunteers to come forward. Um, I can I don't want to actually say much because Mustafa is, is a far more eloquent uh, speaker than I ever will be. But just to remind ourselves that we recently had 10 female secretaries in the government of Bangladesh. I think that's astounding. I think the finance secretary is also a woman. So, you know, again, kudos to Honorable Prime Minister for having the vision to make space for women. Um, I also wanted to tell you that, you know, during pandemic, almost 10.7 million women had lesser work, but 10 mi million men had lesser work. So these are stats that make you think and you think about what you can do. So all of you here, the awardees who are out here, pay more attention to SMEs. Um, and also, I think it's time for us to come together and combine all the sector and think what is the collaborative approach that we can actually take. Women are not about shying away uh, from challenges. Women must remember that the forces against you are far weaker than the forces behind you. So if you need to break down, choose a moment to break down. Don't break down every day. If you need to resolve any conflict, do not be confrontational. Be strategic. Strategy helps. Confrontation doesn't. So while you want your husband or your children or your shashuri or shoshu to understand you better, make sure that you negotiate your way through the discourse and not stand against. It is not wise. I, I, can, I can only tell you that I lived 27 years with a man with whom I had serious differences, but I never fought. I made my way through uh, differences. So 
to be able to steer through differences with grace is the beauty of a woman. I hope that all of you, you are out here, who have been awarded, the awardees will of course inspire many more, including me, to lead more with boldness and lead with more courage. And of course, never shy away from admitting that you are in fear, but transcend fear with greatness and courage. JCI, once again, I thank you for having given me the chance to address this August audience, but invite me again next year and I want to see more women in the governing body. Thank you very much.